So I want you to know that we did not have technical problems, and I've just been sitting here messing with you guys for the last 15 minutes. How do you guys feel about that? That's what we're here for. You know, Steve said, you know what, my clients, my, my people, they're too happy, too content with things going right. Uh, let's make them, let's make them uh, miserable. And I said, sure. All right, so uh, I want you to know it was a team effort to screw with you guys tonight. It was not, not, just, uh, not just Steve or myself. It took, it took a lot of people. So. All right, so today we're going to talk about trading VIX, understanding the index. All right, and before we begin, uh, just the, the basic uh, disclosures. And what this really says is if I say something and you do something and you lose money, it's your fault. So just be aware of that. Now, let's talk, before we talk about VIX, which is my second favorite subject, let's talk about my favorite subject. And my favorite subject is me. Um, uh, I was a floor trader for about 10 years. Uh, then after that, I started Option Pit, which is an education and consulting company. Uh, on the educational side, we'll work with new traders, experienced traders, you name it. And we will, uh, you know, and, and we try and teach them the way professionals think about trading. On the institutional side, the consulting side, we'll work with funds, money managers, asset managers and help them build out strategies, adjust strategies, uh, things like that. Uh, you know, prior to this, I was just on the phone with a hedge fund that I, I'm, we're consulting with. Uh, additionally, uh, my group, uh, Option Pit, uh, we, the guys that own Option Pit also own uh, a little fund called Carmen Line Capital. Uh, that is a, a hedge fund that we trade. Today we're going to talk about what is volatility, what is VIX, the different ways to trade VIX, and I'm going to talk about the KZT index. All right, volatility. All right. Volatility is a measurement of movement of an underlying uh, over a period of time regardless of direction. The higher the volatility, the higher the movement and or expected movement of the underlying. All right, so basically, all right, when we discuss volatility, no matter how long to expiration, if it's a week, if it's a day, if it's a year, if it's a two year, if it's two years, it is an annualized basis. So if I buy a two year leap, a leap stands for long term equity anticipation. Um, if I if I trade even a two or a three year option, the volatility associated with that is an annualized number. All right, the different types of volatility. There are three main types of volatility traders look at. One is historical volatility, and that's how much an underlying has moved in the past over a set number of days. The next is realized volatility. Realized volatility, and that's how much the underlying is moving right now. All right, that's how much the underlying is, is flopping around right now. Then finally, you have implied volatility. And implied volatility is different from the other two in that uh, it's, a, it's an expectation of the future as opposed to backward looking. You know, historical volatility looks at the past few days, weeks, months, years. Realized volatility looks back at the past few minutes or hours. All right. Implied volatility, unlike the others, is how the market is interpreting future movement. All right, how much the, the market might move in the future. All right, so what makes trading volatility that different than trading a stock? All right. What makes trading volatility different than trading a stock? And the answer is that over the long term, 
we know where implied volatility of a stock or index is going to go. We don't know where the stock price is going to go. All right? Implied volatility has a mean reverting function. All right? It has a mean reverting function. Oops, sorry. So, this is a chart of Apple that goes out to kind of the beginning of, uh, beginning of January. All right, you can see, kind of looks like it goes up and up and up, right? You see, this red line is the 50-day moving average. This kind of blue line is the 200-day moving average. All right. Now, this is the VIX of, AP, of Apple, VXAPL. All right. Now, take a look here. It looks a way flatter than this one. There's actually mean reverting qualities to this. As such that, here, let me pull up my trading software. So I'll just pull up a couple of years. We can pull up anything you want. And we're not going to do UBXY. We're going to do Google. Now, take a look at that. Do you see a lot of mean reversion there in Google over the last two years? One year, six months. All right, now, there's actually a fix of Google. Take a minute to pull up clearly. Now take a look at this 200-day moving average. Over this two-year period. You can see the, the index moves a lot, right? I mean, look at this movement. But look at this 200-day moving average. I mean, we've seen a huge pop in implied volatility the last few months, and it's ticked up a little bit. Right. That is implied volatility, how implied volatility mean reverts. Now, what's interesting is that it's not just implied volatility that mean reverts. So, this blue line is 20-day historical volatility. The kind of peach line is one year of historical volatility. All right. What do you think about that? What do you notice? Volatility has patterns. All right. You know, I... I one of the things Steve really hits on is, is the patterns of candlesticks. The pan, you know, this is a doji one, doji two. I, you know, again, I'm not a candle guy. All right. I couldn't hold a candle to Steve's candles. All right. I'd be like a candle on the wind. Um, but what I trade is this volatility component, which in of itself is mean reverting. All right. And VIX does the same thing. All right. So, 
The point is a stock can go anywhere and stay there. And while volatility can go anywhere, it can't stay anywhere. It will revert back. It will. 100% of the time. Unless it goes out of business. All right. So understanding this will help you with buy and sell decisions. All right. Most traders think mean reversion is an instantaneous thing. All right. Vol explodes. Vol comes back. Volatility explodes. And it comes right back. Volatilities can stay low for long periods of time. Extremely long periods of time. Take a look at what volatility did between 2012 and 2014, and you get a clear view of that. All right, it's important not to have a recency bias. Do we know what a recency bias is? So a recency bias is a belief that the recent past is the way things are. Does that make sense? So the oh, things have gone this way the last three months. That means the, that's the way they are. Wrong. All right. So. You know, so the, the point is, is that volatility, it will have zones that it will stay in for a while, but over a 10, 20 year period, it has, an, especially in indexes, like the S&P 500, it has a mean price, an average. All right. So don't have a recency bias. Understand how high and low vol can get and how long it can stay there. When, all right, so let's talk about what trading options is like when vols are low. When IVs are low, they can stay there for a very long time. This is when people think they're really smart. Look how smart I am. Look how much money I'm making. I'm the smartest guy in the world. Look how great I am. All right. This is when the easy money gets made. I had some guy, you know, it was so funny. I had a guy in July, be like, you know, I don't know why you spend so much time talking about hedging and, and all these other things. All I do is sell, sell credits and put money in the bank. And when I read that, I laughed. And then two weeks later, August happened. And my guess is if he was short selling a lot of credit spreads, he lost a lot of money. All right. So the play is to kind of when volatility is low, you are looking to collect premium for sure. But you don't want to necessarily be short a lot of extra contracts. All right. And you certainly want to be long volatility as a whole, long a, a, a number we call vega. So when IV is high, it will fall back, all right? Until recently, spikes were short, all right? This one is not and has not been. We've really been in a period of higher volatility since August. All right? Very long period of time, all right? IV can stay high for months and then take months to come back, all right? There are all sorts of trades that can work, all right? Long VXX, short time spread, short butterflies, short the wings on a ratio. There's all sorts of trades that can work. But the key is you have to understand where you are, all right? So any, qu like, real brief questions on volatility before I move into VIX?
All right, great. So now let's talk about VIX. The VIX is the CBOE volatility index, and the purpose of this index is to gauge the buying and selling of options in the S&P 500. All right, it gauges the cost of insurance. All right, and the idea is that when there's more buying over selling, generally the market is looking to buy protection. And when there is more selling than buying, the market is not out seeking protection. All right. Thus, when VIX is up, the cost of insuring a portfolio is higher. And when VIX is down, it is not. The good question. All right, question. You mentioned we are in a higher period. What defines high versus low? I've heard the average of 21 used on CNBC. I think the average of 21 is wrong. When I think about the mean of VIX, I think about really net occurrences on a histogram. And if you look at a histogram of VIX, it places the mean around 17 and a half. So not a straight mean because, um, you know, there's a, uh, you know, it's hard to use an average when there's not an upper bound, but there is a lower bound, a straight average. So VIX can go as high as it wants, but it can only go so low. And so rather than using the straight average, I look at a histogram. So 17 and a half. So similar to the S&P 500, the index is not traded. You all know there's no way to just trade the, S the SPX, right? You can't just call your broker and say, buy me the S&P 500. Buy me one S&P 500 share. All right? But... Unlike the S&P 500, there is not a basket or ETF that can create VIX, all right? So if you want to buy the S&P 500, you can buy a future. You can buy a SPY. <coughs> you can buy a basket of stocks that tightly correlates. But with VIX, you can't do that. Uh, the question was, with commodities, what is high versus low? Every commodity has its own volatility, John. Just like that 17 and a half number I threw out is for the S&P 500. It is not for the NASDAQ or the Russell 2000 or the Russell 1000 or any of those indexes. All right, so the VIX has a constant duration of 30 days to expiration. That means that tomorrow... The VIX calculation is a 30-day to expiration calculation. Today, the VIX calculation was a 30-day to expiration VIX calculation. It's a big difference. All right. There's, there's no, it is always, always 30 days to expiration. It'll be 30 days to expiration in a month, in a year, in five years. All right. The weighting of the VIX puts more emphasis on at the money options. So really, the at the money level where the where the S and P is trading, that is the biggest driver of where VIX is going to trade. All right. Next, it's out of the money puts. So people that buy puts to hedge are going to drive VIX more than call buyers. And then people, then finally, people that buy out-of-the-money calls are going to be the final driver of VIX. VIX uses the two weekly options closest to 30 days to expiration to calculate itself. One is equal or less than 30 days to expiration. The other one is more. So in this one, in this chart, you can see the October 414, so 2014, you know, the fourth week is 30 days to expiration. Is it normal for SPY, QQQ, and DIA to have lower IVs compared to other securities? Uh, it depends on the security, Eric. Uh, SPY will have a, a lower IV than QQQ. Uh, I don't know about – SPY and DIA, and DIA are very similar. Uh, SPY will have a, a higher volatility than, like, a utility – but it will have a lower volatility than a biotech. So it's really equity, equity, um, equity dependent.
So VIX is looking at the 30-day and the 37-day to calculate itself. That is where its calculation is coming from. So the VIX is quoted as a price, but is really a percentage. Volatility, despite not being spoken as a percentage, is always a percentage. So a VIX of 30 is actually 30% annualized volatility. 30% annualized expected movement over the next 30 days. Now, oh, the red line is VIX. The blue line is the S&P 500. What do you notice? Well, take a look at the movement. So on the right is VIX level. On the left is S&P level. Yeah. They have a strong negative correlation. Yeah. They have a strong negative correlation. All right. Around 80, uh, 0 0.8, negative 0.85. All right. Now, here's a chart of what VIX has looked like in the last year. Again, it has really moved with, take a look at the movement down here. I mean, this is the movement in VIX. So, but take a look at that movement. It is very different than what was happening prior in the last year, isn't it? It's a totally different volatility market we're in now. Remember I talked about recency bias? If you're trading thinking this March is like last March, or this April will be like last April, or this May will be like last May, guess what? It's not. The VIX negatively correlates with the SPX. When SPX is up, VIX is generally down. When SPX is down, VIX is generally up. All right? Makes sense is generally when the market sells off, vol does increase. There's also the nature of similar movement against a lower number. So VIX is trading basically opposite of a normal market. Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. Um, when... It, you know, one of the things that I think I'm going to get to in this is when the VIX doesn't correlate, something is up. It's telling you something. So when you've got VIX up and the market up, that's telling you something. Market down, VIX down, that's telling you something. So the construction of the VIX naturally causes VIX to rally when the market falls and then fall when the market rallies. Fear index is such a terrible, terrible term. There is uh, the insurance index. All right, so the natural construction of S&P options will cause VIX to increase. All right, now couple of characteristics about VIX options and futures. VIX options and futures are European exercise. This means they cannot be exercised early. All right. They have a unique settlement procedure that is based on, you know, they have a unique settlement procedure. Both VIX futures and VIX options have a unique settlement procedure. All right. Based on... The settlement procedure is VIX MO and not VIX itself. So if you want to trade settlement, you follow VIX MO. And at 30 days to expiration, VIX, a VIX future, a VIX future will have a beta to the actual cash index of about 0.5. As time passes, the beta increases. 
The VIX futures are the most successful future product introduced in the last 20 years. They trade out to eight months. Each month trades independently. All right. So this is one of the things that's different about VIX futures. You know, the S&P 500 futures. So if I buy, right now the active future in the S&P 500 is March, correct? And then the next month out is June. All right. Now there is an exact mathematical calculation, give or take 10 cents or less, that ties those two together. That exact mathematical calculation, all right, that exact mathematical calculation does not exist in, week, in VIX futures. They can move independently of one another based on what is going on. Does it help to chart the skew? Yes, I do that myself to some degree. There are, weekly, there are weekly futures that are starting to trade. So there are futures that expire every week in VIX now. VIX futures are in what's called a contango 80% of the time. And they're typically used as hedges against a long portfolio. VIX options, most successful option product. They trade out eight months. Again, they trade independently of each other. All right. There is an old adage that, you know, you can't own calendars for a credit. That is not the case with VIX options. You can't. And they just listed weekly options on in October. All right. And they're, they're trading a lot. And the underlying of VIX options, and this is important, the underlying of VIX options is the future, not the cash index. That is an important thing to be aware of. And again, used as a hedge. VIX options are extremely liquid. They trade over hybrid and open outcry. When I trade VIX, I trade open outcry. And they run a tight market, typically. Nickel to a penny wide. Spread can trade in pennies. And this is just kind of a screenshot of the activity. And what I want you to notice is that uh, the average volume is 750,000 contracts a day. And the open interest, 7.5 million contracts. That is a ton of volume. All right, using the options. So now, this is important. Recall that VIX options for at the, an at-the-money strike is not the cash index, but it's the underlying. So, on a specific date, the underlying, the at-the-money option for a step would be 25.20. So the, the at-the-money option in September would have been 25. The at-the-money for October would have been 23. And the at-the-money option... For November, would have been 22. So, if I trade a September-November long call spread at the 22 strike, I would get a credit. Why? Well, the at the, my September option is an in the money, and my November option is an out is, a, is an at the money. Not the same trade. So when using options to trade a higher VIX, typically the most favorable call is one that is slightly out the money or out of the money or at the money. All right. Buying a call that is at the money and selling an out of the money fall, call can allow for bullish verticals with favorable risk reward. So if you're looking to just go along VIX, all right, just real briefly, um, generally the best trade is a call spread, long. Not a put spread. Short. Now, trading short 
The further the out of money the put is, the lower the IV. Owning a long put will have favorable characteristics in a falling or stable environment. Now, let's briefly talk about the volatility ETN. All right. As trading in the fixed futures has become more and more active, there's been all these ETNs that have come out, or ETPs. And they all have a stated purpose, but sometimes they have some unintended consequences that the creators were aware of, but a lot of individuals aren't. So do we all know who King Sisyphus is? So Sisyphus was the guy who thought he was smarter than Caesar, or smarter than Zeus. And so because he was, Zeus thought he was so clever, he enchanted a boulder uh, to roll away as King Sisyphus was rolling it up a hill. All right? It was an, etern an eternity of useless efforts and unending frustration. Thus, it came to pass that pointless or inimitable activities are sometimes called Sisyphean. I'll explain that in a minute. The VXX, or the IPATH's S&P 500 short-term futures ETN, attempts to replicate being long a VIX future with a constant duration of 30 days. You know, it makes sense. VIX is constant duration of 30 days. Why not a future with a constant duration of 30 days? The intent of the fund is to allow traders to get long or short near-dated forward volatility. The fund does this by constantly rolling out of, out of front month futures and into the second month future. So here's the problem. Would you run a, 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 a business where you bought a product for 16.10 and sold it at 15 and a half? You know, Eric, there, it's all different. That is such a broad question. Um, they all have their own uses. Yeah, no, you wouldn't run a business like that. And so this is what VXXs look like. And this is just through 2013. Believe me, it gets worse. Split adjusted, VXX is now worth, uh, split adjusted, VXX is initial initial IPO price is somewhere around $7,000, I believe. So VXX is slowly rolling itself to zero. VXX should not be held for more than a few hours if futures are in contango. Great day trading product, not a good hedge. VXX is a good volatility day trading product. All right, and it can be used to hedge against falling volatility. So if you've got a long volatility portfolio, then maybe you short VXX as a hedge. And it is a poor hedge against rising volatility. Different products, similar result. VXZ is the midterm. So instead of 30 days, I believe its duration is about 92. UVXY, which is even worse, is double, double VXX and levered. TVIX is a clone of UVXY, and if you're going to use a product to hedge, XVZ is probably the closest, but even that isn't very good. Now there's the inverse ETNs. The inverse ETNs are theoretically going to infinity, but they have a daily tracking issue that typically causes them to underperform being short the actual volatility into ETNs. These are XIV. ZIV, and SVXY. And SVXY has options. Now, finally, let's talk about crisis alpha. An alternative go to going to cash in a, in a major market. All right. Crisis alpha is an approach that attempts to go long volatility at specific times. And the index that I look at to go long volatility is called KZT. 
So on Bloomberg, you can look up. Yeah, you guys don't have a Bloomberg, I know, but you can you can pull it up. The KZT Vol Index, and this is the KZT Vol Index, and what it does is it calculates when um, when the market is 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 afraid of a potential crisis, and what it does is goes long. It goes long fixed futures. You see, this is a long period of time. It's in cash a lot, but when it goes long, it makes a lot of money quickly. This is a 12-year chart. It's a 12-year chart. And what I want you to notice is all these crazy periods are periods of time where it would be you'd want hedging. And, you know, it's not a simple calculation, but it's definitely one that I look at and, and follow. And when a KZT starts going long, starts moving, to me that's a sign that something, is, it's based on VIX futures. To me that's a sign that the market is doing something screwy. All right, so when KZT vol says buy, all right, uh, in that it's a dollar figure starts to move. All right, so what I would do when I'm hedging is I'll buy a VXX against a portfolio using 25 to 50% of my margin, all right? And it was invented by my friends Matt and Mike Thompson, who uh, run uh, Typhon Capital Management. Good guys, if you have questions on KZT, reach out to that, all right? And it's Matt at Typhon Cap, Mike at Typhon Cap. And the reason why I show you this index is I want you to know that there are people that are watching VIX and using it as a, as a hedge fire, like, oh, VIX is moving, I should hedge, instead of just constantly being hedged. And so it's, that's called crisis alpha. So instead of just owning puts all the time against something, what, what this do, does is say, hey, it's time to hedge. And, and there are all sorts of different ways of looking at hedge indicators. This is one. But if you own stocks or you're trading a lot of short premium, Having a hedge indicator will save you a lot of money if it works. And this is kind of what the index has done um, as a part of the S&P 500. When you've gone uh, 30, when you've gone S&P 500 plus 30 percent KZT vol, made a big difference. So in summary. VIX options are unique. IV and VIX are correlated. Bear and bull plays have different structures and play the, and play the spikes and understand KZT. So now, you're saying, Mark, thanks for teaching me. Um, what now? All right, well, I have a follow-up course. It's about an hour. And I dive deeper. So I start out with, with some... Some of the, the vol information, but I go a little more into it. And then I dig, I dig a lot deeper into how to trade VXX, how to trade UVXY, how to trade VIX options, how to trade, you know, some things about VIX futures. So I give you all sorts of tips to being long and short and trading the different ETNs. All right. So I'll understand, you'll learn how to understand how to trade volatility and options. Mastering hedging and directional trading in VIX, understanding how to trade VIX ETPs like VXX, and um, techniques we I use to trade. All right, and um, they can give you a link in in the forum right here. I mean, I, I can as well if you want, but uh, I'm sure Becky will drop in the link. And now I'll take any questions you might have. Do all these ETNs have the same problem with the K? Um, they all, they all have, they all try and deal with it in their own way. That, that's for sure.
What's my track record? Uh, we do run a track record with these different strategies. I mean, the long-term return of VXX, you just have to, of being short these things, you just have to have something to pull you off the pedal. We run a strategy letter that runs more than just the, the VIX and VIX ETPs, uh, but we do keep a P&L on that. So uh, if you want to shoot me an email, I can, I, can, I can send you what it is. It doesn't have any of the risk-adjusted pieces. And it's, very, it's a hands-off approach. What if KZT is not firing right now? I shorted UVXY put, lost money. Probably. What's your outlook for VIX the next three to six months? Uh, I think it's going to stay in this range, kind of the 18 to 26. Uh, that's what I said, yeah. UVXY and VXX decay, XIV gains over time. Is the course going to be recorded? Is it one hour long? It is recorded, and it is one hour long. How can you relate Elliott Wave principles to this? You can't. I'm, first off, I don't look at Elliott Waves, but um, I'm not sure that fits for this. I mean, there's, there's mean reversion to some of this, but explain to me how you're going to pull an Elliott Wave on a chart that looks like this. You see an Elliott wave there? You tell me. No, I don't think it's to stay low. I think it's going to be in the 18 to 25 range. That's high. That's elevated. It's 17 bucks. At least it should be. Hmm. Why would they? They put it. They put it straight in their uh, thing that there's a problem here. There. Well, that doesn't seem right. You know what? It is saying 147, and that's not correct.
So we'll get you a new we'll get you an updated link so you're not paying so you're not paying uh Well, we'll get this figured out, folks. So. Yeah, so tell you what, if you pay the 147, I'll rebate the 130 back. I promise, okay? You just email me and say, hey, if I don't do it, if, if you uh, pay the 147, I'll, I'll rebate it back uh, tomorrow. Let me see if I can find the link. I think I'll be able to find it here. All right, here we go. I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm sorry. I have the link now. There you go. How does that one work? Try that guy. There we go. And I will uh, obviously have to go through and fix this after the fact. Is there a monthly subscription? Nope. No, no, there is not. If you want more information, you can use that. Becky, I'll get, uh, I will get you an updated uh, candle link for uh, the email tomorrow. I'm sorry about this. All right, guys. Uh, any other questions? Can we look at candlestick part pattern for volatility products to make a trade? You know, it, it becomes a little more difficult, but I'm sure there is. Uh, I don't believe we have one tied in. Yeah, that's it. That's for the option pit live thing. I'm sorry. One more time. Let me give you the right one. That one was wrong, too. Here is the one you want to use. I'm sorry. Use that. Or use the one that's attached to the other link. I, I don't know why I don't why this is too difficult. 
The other one is the subscription option at Live. Great service. Not what I'm here to. Not what I'm here to sell you. And I'm sorry, this is a mess. Normally, it is not this difficult. So there you go. This is the one I want you to use. The one I just put in. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? Yeah, sorry about the little confusion there with the sign up, but hopefully I get uh, some of you guys sign up. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. There's your. Uh, it, 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 you'll, as, as soon as you sign up, you'll have access to it. Uh, I didn't see Kevin Walsh's question. Please, read. please ask. Please re ask. When IV in the, in the VIX and SPS correlation break down, is that usually an inverse relationship? Yes, it is. So when you see vol rising and the underlying rising, that is a bear signal and vice versa. It's about an hour long, but it's, it'll be worth it. Am I going to be in Las Vegas anytime soon? Uh, maybe next November, but anytime you're in Chicago, look me up. We can hang out. Well, thanks, Tom, and I appreciate that. That's working. Working for me. We finally have a link that works, folks. The gods have the gods have smiled upon us. No, Becky, uh, we want to use this one, the second one, not the, not that one. I'm sorry, Becky. You're the best. All right, everybody. Uh, I want to thank everybody for their time and for uh, the patience at the beginning. And I want to thank Becky for being super awesome and Steve for hosting me. And uh, and I hope everybody has a wonderful March. And uh, and uh, hopefully I'll I'll hear from you guys soon.